plane I live in right now? That's a brilliant question. So let me ask you a question first. Why do you think you want one? You know, what is it about the post 9 11 that makes you want one? The chances are you just always fancied one because they look so nice and it's been on your list of cars that you would want to drive one day and to own one day. That's a pretty good reason. Um, an 911 is special for lots of reasons. So what is it about 911 is it's so so special, you know, and so unique? Well, like I say, there's an awful lot of things. It's a very um it's a kind of quirky car I would say. It's a rear engine car as you probably know already. And there's not very many cars that are actually properly rear-engined. Rear-engined just means that the engine sits behind the rear axle. There's a Boxster or a Cayman that's mid-engined and the engine sits behind you but in front of the rear axle. So the 911 is a full rear-engined car and that gives it very distinct sort of a handling traits and handling dynamics if you like. So that's probably one of the first things to notice about it. And you do feel it when you're driving it, you know, even more so in the older ones like this, you can feel the, the, the weight behind the car and the, the traction that that affords because of the, uh, the, the weight behind the, the driven wheels at the back there. It gives it a certain way of handling, which is quite unique to Porsche 911s. Well, it's really um, and one of the first things I asked the person back is well what are you planning using the car for mostly uh, you know is it going to be a weekend thing or is it going to be a daily driver or what was it a, a track tool or something like that what is it you fancy it for and what kind of roads are you going to be driving on mostly because um, that can often determine what kind of car you, you, you end up with obviously and your budget's got a big part to play in that as well how much you can afford to spend on a car it's going to have a big impact on what type of car you can buy obviously and then, I mean, it's probably one of the most recognisable sports cars in the world you know it's got that kind of distinctive silhouette kind of fastback shape that makes it really noticeable um, and distinctive all over the world you know it's been Porsche's signature model since it was first made in 1964 um, people say that the car hasn't really changed much since 1964 in a way that's true but to those that know a little bit about these cars they can say that they've actually changed quite a lot um, although they look quite similar especially when you start talking about like, the old air-cooled 911s like this one we're in just now, this is the 9, Type 993 which is the last of the air-cooled 911s these cars are very distinctive again even out with all the other 911s that have been around because this car has been around such a long time it's kind of engraved itself into the psyche of people as a kind of a, a, kind of a thing to have you know, a, kind of, a sort of dream car if you like to many people um, it's kind of engraved itself into popular culture being a kind of thing of luxury and of prestige and of value and tradition and racing heritage. Basically, the 911 has got the wanted factor off the scale and it's absolutely a car you should consider buying, you know. Um, but with these cars haven't been around for so long there's in, in so many variations. There's a 911 to suit most people and to most people's style and taste and budget. You know, from Coupe, Cabriolet, you know, gearbox, manual, Tectronic, um, Targa tops, you know, we've got ones, 911 Turbos, Turbo S, GT3, GT2s. We've got all these cars, you know, that have got different price points and different performance points. Um, all with a kind of commonality, they're all 911s, but each with a, a slightly different kind of tweak to it to make it a bit more distinctive or focused or special. Well, they're all special, let me tell you. Um, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is there's 911s to suit just about everyone. Depending on what what you want it for, there's a 911 to, to suit you specifically. So why would you want to buy it? Well, probably one of the first things you notice about these cars is, is the looks. I mean, it's a beautiful looking machine. I've had this car, like I say, a long time, and I've, I've, I've loved Porsches all my life. And there's something about the 911 design that just never seems to to get boring. Uh, I've looked at this car. <laughs> it's the kind of car you can look at forever and not really get bored of looking at it. If you know what I mean, that makes sound a bit. Maybe that's just me. But I'm sure a lot of you will agree actually that there's something about the looks of this car that when you look at it, it's got this perfect functional style. Um, it's pure and it's distinctive and it's such a, it's just beautiful, you know, and, and you never you, you never fail to get charmed with the looks of this car. So one of the first things that would draw you to an N11 is probably how it looks, I would say. Um, but it doesn't stop there, you know, once you actually get behind the wheel, all N11 is drive really, really well. They're practical cars, they're easy to drive, even these older ones, um, but everything feels like solid and over-engineered and kind of like, built like a tank. The pedals are all firm, everything feels solid, um, and the steering feels me 
started. It's it's still easy, pretty easy to drive every day. So N11s, all N11s across the range are practical cars, and they're all easy to drive. Um, and they've all got this kind of sporty duo nature where they can be, you know, fairly placid doing whatever you want them to do, and they can turn into a race car if you want them to. So the, the, all N11s have got that kind of dual character trait that I often talk about with Porsches. They're reliable cars, you know, there's some variations of N11s that have had a, a slightly checkered history, some of the first water killed 996s, etc. But even those cars generally are reliable. All Porsches are generally reliable. Um, they're, they're relatively cheap to maintain. Parts can be expensive, but you don't have to have to buy a lot of parts. And because they're reliable cars, like I said, they're, they're generally quite relatively cheap to, to, to maintain. There's going to be exceptions to that when a car requires a, a you know possibly a gearbox rebuild or an engine rebuild in some cases. But look, if you go into a, a purchase expecting that, then that, that can be fine as well as long as it's factored into the initial cost. But generally speaking, if you get a car checked out and it's in good running order, chances are it's going to be a, a relatively cheap ownership uh, proposition for you. Even servicing for these N elements is, is a bit more expensive than a normal car, but for the special car that it is, I think the service and cost across the board, especially if you get them done at an independent garage, are, um, are good value, uh, in my opinion. So that's, you know, we've got looks, practicality, easy to live with, easy to drive, relatively affordable. And like I always say, and like I mentioned in my Porsche books, these, these cars can be practically free motoring. Now, what does that mean? Well, like I say, it just means if you buy the right car at the right price, um, and you had to have it for a certain amount of time, there's a pretty good chance that the car will either hold its value or potentially appreciate a little bit depending on the model that you buy and you'll get your money back come resale barring service costs, MOT, insurance and tax which is a given for any car, you know but in my mind, if you can get most of your purchase price back come resale then that to me is practically free motoring and if you want to get really in depth about what kind of Porsches are really suited to practically free ownership and by all means, check out my, my, my Porsche books. Um, they're really good reviews, I'll, I'll put them in the, the comments uh, below. Okay, I see what it comes right down to. 911s are special, right? They do start, you know. They've got this wonderful kind of mystique around them as well, and it's um, a, lot, a lot of people just aspire to own one, like I've said. And there's, there's there's a good reason for that, you know. These cars are just fantastic all around us. Um, they're, they're quite prestige without being too flashy and in your face. They manage to kind of pull off being quite understated, as well as being something that's that luxurious and. A luxurious item, you know, and let's be honest, I mean, you don't buy luxurious items or, you know, a, a car like this, you don't buy it really with with sound logic and financial, you know, figures and all that, even though they do make financial sense, like I've, like I've demonstrated. You quite often buy a car like this with your heart, you know, you buy it with the emotional attachment to it, um, just because you, you really want it, and you've always wanted it. And that's, that's a good reason to buy anything, anything really, but especially an, an old Porsche or an old N11. You know, you might worry about um, you might worry about owning it in case it's too expensive to run or in case it becomes a nightmare or unreliable or that. I don't think it will be. Generally speaking, these cars are, are, are excellent to own. And I would say now is a pretty good time to buy your dream Porsche. You know, like I'm always saying, life, life is pretty brief, guys, you know. And, um, fancy an N11 then by all means if you can afford it and you know the figures work for you then don't hesitate just go ahead and do it any portion of the N11s it's just one of these things where you could just have it just almost just to to keep and take it out of the odd time and just enjoy the pleasure of, of looking at it quite a lot of the time to be honest and then uh, thinking about it and maybe doing two or three thousand miles if that's all you want to do or you're perfectly you know you can rack up 10 12 thousand miles a year plus if you want to without any problems no real issues to think about guys it's just that the main takeaway for this video is that if you fancy a Porsche 911 right now 
my recommendation is that you just go ahead and do it, do your research, um, find out which one you want, have a go in as many as you possibly can, uh, see what works for you, you might find that the PDK gearbox is good for you or you prefer a manual, you might want a, a, you know, a Targa or a convertible or prefer the Coupe, a lot of, a lot of people prefer the, the, the Coupes, uh, the 911s, um, I would say with any Porsche it's always good to check out the base model, some people fancy a Turbo S and think they want a Turbo or whatever it is, my advice is guys check out the base model because quite often Porsche's base model, uh, like I've got here, see too, um, it's more than enough for what you want, you know, it's fast enough, powerful enough and it feels good enough, um, so by all means just check out as many models as you can and see what, see what works for you and your lifestyle and your driving needs. So I hope you get some kind of value to this video, if you have I'd really appreciate you giving me a wee thumbs up, uh, a wee like and subscribe to the channel for more Porsche related content. I've been doing more videos in my 990 and the Boxster as well that I bought fairly recently. Inside this uh, car just in case you've not seen inside one before. These doors, even just opening the door it feels quite clunky and well engineered and solid. So obviously here we have the interior, uh, it's a classic grey interior, these are the early style sports seats with the high uh, bolster and side bits, they're electric, they're adjustable, they're very comfortable, um, it's a basic dashboard layout, the same dashboard as you got from 1964 to this car, uh, the five dial um, the cluster there in the dash and it's a taco dead centre, classic poor stuff, uh, very basic interior you know, I mean the, the, the the materials are all uh, very well specced, you know, it's high quality everywhere. The uh, the buttons and switches are a bit haphazard uh, still, but this is a mid-90s car, but to be honest, the cars that came before this, the 3.2 and the SC before that, and the, the various cars before that all had like haphazard controls, especially the heater control, which I remember being a bit of a nightmare to be honest with you. I don't think I've, I've met many people that could actually work out the heating control on an old air-cooled 911, but this one is an improvement. Um, I'll just show you around there. It's, uh, very, it's, it's very comfy. I put it in the back here. These seats fold down, you can put shopping in here. Like so. Um, oh, you're cool, you know, I haven't seen there'll be tiny seats. You might get a couple of children back there, some shopping, but not very many other items, I don't think. Certainly not tall people. Um, so there's the interior. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're getting some kind of insight into what Porsche 911s are like to own. If you're getting some value, give us a wee thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Porsche related content. Thank you. Covered a lot of points to this video, guys. But see, at the end of the day, do you know what? You could even just say that none of that really matters. Because, I mean, look at it. I mean, just have a good look at it. You know, it's just a, it's a piece of automotive art, I call it. Um, and that sounds a bit dramatic, maybe, but, I mean, I think it is. It's just an absolutely stunning looking thing. A beautiful shape, beautiful design. You never get tired of looking at it. You're always happy to drive it. Uh, if, if your drive is special, it feels like an event, never boring. Um, and you can go out on a Sunday, for me, I can go out on the weekends or whatever it is, a nice night like tonight, come out, go for a wee blast in it, and just forget everything else, and it's just you in the car, and it's, it's a great experience. Um, it, for me, it's therapy. <laughs> You know, after a hard day's work or whatever, you can come out in your 911 and you have a nice time and blow away some cobwebs and give it some beans if you feel like it. So thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. If you want any other Porsche related content, um, any reviews on any of the cars that I've got or, or other cars, uh, anything at all, put them in the comments below and I'll see if I can do them in the weeks and months ahead. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.